Blessings, blessings, blessings. And a good evening to each and every one to whom this podcast will come. I want to say thanks to the Lord our God for his grace and for his mercy and for this wonderful opportunity to be able to speak to the concept of our Lord's Supper. And I say the concept of our Lord's Supper because in as much as the topic given to me says that the promised son, we cannot talk about the promised son without actually going to the promise that was made in Genesis 3.15. And so I ask you to bear with me just for a few minutes as we lay the foundation this evening. We are in the uh, eve of the Lord's Supper. And um, we are preparing our hearts and our minds to sit at the Lord's table. And so we want to give God thanks even for the privilege of life that another year has come when we are able to partake at the Lord's table. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for the shed blood on Calvary. More than all, we thank you this evening that you have called us sons and daughters and you have brought us into this, your royal family. We ask that you will allow for your direction right now by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. As I said before, that the topic given me is that of the promised son. However, we can't really talk about the promised son as it relates to the Messiah without going back to the promise that was made in Genesis 3.15. And I will stipulate up front, and I'm glad that those of us who are hearing this or watching this are Bible scholars, and we'll all agree that the son of promise was Isaac. Isaac is the promised son, and we will stipulate that without going going into all the details of the promise that God made to Abraham as it relates to a son. What we will say as we talk about that promise that God made to Abraham is that there were three components. There are those who accept and agree that there are three components to that promise, one being the son of promise, two being the land, and three being the seed. And so we are going to be talking about the seed as we discuss uh, the promised son in this short session. When we look at what the Apostle Paul had to say as it relates to this promise, and we're looking here at Hebrews chapter 11, reading verse 9, Hebrews chapter 11, bear with me for a sec, Hebrews Hebrews 11, in 
and we're reading from verse 17. We're not going to spend a lot of time there. So Hebrews 11. And this is what the Apostle Paul had to say. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that it is in Isaac shall thy seed be called. According that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So in this passage, as the Apostle Paul talked about uh, the promise, we see where he is actually talking about the seed and not the son, because it is the promised seed that we're dealing with. We also understand that at no point or time did Isaac fulfill any of the messianic promises that was made in the scriptures as it relates to the promised seed. And so Isaac was a type, and we say a type because we see uh, a, a number of things happening as it related to Isaac prefiguring Christ. Uh, Isaac was being offered in this passage that we just read from uh, Hebrews. The Apostle Paul talked about uh, Abraham offering up Isaac. And far as Abram was concerned, Isaac was dead. But he also had this hope that even if he died, he would be resurrected by the Lord. And so in Isaac, we see a type of Christ. And so we move away from this type, and we now begin to look at the promise as it relates to the Messiah, as it relates to the seed. I've been given two passages, one in Deuteronomy and again in Isaiah. Uh, we 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 can we can never actually uh, take everything that's there in Isaiah, but let's start with the promise in uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy tells us that a prophet like unto me will the Lord raise up from among you unto him shall he turn. This is a prophecy that Moses is making as it relates to the messianic seed, as it relates to Christ. And we know that, yes, Jesus did fulfill that prophecy. In fact, when we come into the ministry of Jesus, we find that when Jesus fed the 5,000, when they came again, and Jesus says, I know you're following me because of the fish and the bread. And they responded to him, well, you are a prophet like Moses. Moses fed us, so you have to feed us. And, and, and you should know that Jesus, sometimes when you look at the statement that he made, he's very sarcastic, very humorous. And Jesus' response was, yes. Moses fed you all, but they are all dead. But the bread that I will give you is the bread of life. And so in that we find where even the children of Israel, the Jews, recognize Jesus as that prophet, as that Messiah. Then we come to the virgin birth in Isaiah, and uh, 
I, I am trying. It's it's almost like a, a challenge because there is so much in Isaiah. But since I am not the only one dealing with Isaiah, I'm only going to take one passage from Isaiah, and that is Isaiah chapter 7 and reading from verse 14. So we find here in Isaiah, let me go there, bear with me again, uh, Isaiah 7, going from verse 14. says here, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. We understand here there is absolutely no doubt even though there are those who would try to cast doubt on the scriptures that this passage was, was fulfilled in Christ. The Virgin Mary gave birth to a son whose name was called Jesus. Also tells us that he was supposed to come from Bethlehem and we understand that he did come out of Bethlehem. And so what we are seeing in the Messianic uh, testimonies here is that, yes, the seed is Christ. The seed is the Messiah. The seed is the one whom we called our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And for that matter, he is the promised son. I pray that this little bit of information will do us well as we prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper in Jesus' name. Father, again, we thank you for the privilege of standing before your people we thank you for the teachers whom you have given unto us so that we are, unable, we are able to unravel the mystery of godliness where in the time that was appointed, you sent your only begotten son to die and redeem us from the sting of death. And you have declared, O oh Lord, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh grave, where is your victory? The victory is in you. And so we thank you this evening in Jesus' name. Amen.